Hi there, this is John. I'm actually in Toronto with a Holiday Inn doing a conference. And I'm with Bill Byrne. Hello there, Bill. Hi, John. How are you? Now, a lot of people know your name, but it's the first time they've seen your face. And they've been happy for that up to this point. <laughs> now, you're the marketing guru. We promote you as the marketing expert. It's an interesting year to look at marketing. What are your thoughts about marketing today? Right now, I think it's the most exciting time to be in the marketing and advertising business. The future, over the next 12 to 18 to 24 months and beyond, for advertising in general, it's just going to be a huge learning curve, and it's going to be an opportunity for even the world's best to learn new tricks. And they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Those people never met an advertiser. So you're telling us to dare to be different. Oh, definitely. What are you doing in your own organization? Give us an example. Well, the bulk of what we're doing now is we're approaching our marketing concepts, uh, both print, visual, and auditory, as theater, as more entertaining the customer. To add value, you have to make the experience worthwhile. And to make the experience worthwhile, you have to entertain the customer. So it goes from everything from your displays to your commercials to your print advertising to the type of events you host in your garden center. you just got to be a little bit off the wall. So we're looking at a Boxing Day in May event this year. is probably going to be our biggest one. Wait a minute. Boxing Day is Christmas. Well, it's the day after Christmas. But Boxing Day traditionally in, in Canada or North America at least is looked at as the biggest retail holiday of the year. That's the day when all the retailers pull out all the stops to make all their year budgets. Well, for us, that happens to be in Victoria Day here in Canada. Victoria Day weekend is the when, when people believe that the frost is out of the ground and it's safe to plant. And that's in May. That's in May. Okay. And that's uh, typically the first Monday before the 24th, 24th of May holiday. So that Monday, or that weekend, we're going to start on the Saturday by calling it Boxing Day in May. And we're going to open all our stores at 6 o'clock in the morning to give our gardeners and our customers an extra push and start into their weekend. So what are you going to do to make it different? It's going to be price. Well, yeah, a little bit. Okay. But I'm not sure what that price is going to be yet. Okay. Because, uh, I mean, if you want to come over, if you want to come back over May 1st, you might get a hint. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a lot of displays in the store that are wrapped up, covered in black landscape fabric, wrapped in black shrink wrap or something, with handwritten signs that saying, do not open till May 16th, Boxing Day in May special. Can you justify the space in the business to keep it tied up for that time? Can you justify not doing something different? Okay. Is a bigger question. I mean, we continually fight with box stores here and fight for our piece of the market share, which we rightfully own. And I believe that a lot of the reasons that independents are sacrificing business to the box stores is they let the box stores start making the rules. Okay. So my plan is to do something they can't step to. So the independent is going to set the rules? Absolutely. It's our game. Okay. Now, on the day, what's going to happen? Uh, I have no idea. Stand back. I don't know how big this thing gets. Uh, we're going to start with tailgate parties in our parking lots. We're going to have uh, a gift for each of the first 50 customers in each store, and that gift will be a, a Terra Greenhouse's gift card. Yeah. Minimum $20 value could be worth up to $500. Yeah. We won't know until you open it. Okay. So that, that should get some impetus going early in the day. The door crasher specials are going to be just that. They're going to run out throughout the day. We've done in the past live auctions in store where we spontaneously start auctioning a product. Anything can happen. It's a dynamic day. It should be a day full of fun and adventure. And that's what we're trying to make that day for our customers is an adventurous day. A day where the hobby of gardening begins with the shopping trip. It's not a necessary evil to get to the part you really want to do, which is plant. It's all about making that part of the journey part of the excitement, part of the hobby, and part of the reason you're doing it in the first place. Now, how are you going to promote this? Are you going to rely on newspapers or flyers or radio? What's the tool that you're going to use? Uh, a lot of in-store buzz. Uh -huh. We're going to be doing a little bit of, of, of social marketing through the Internet and through customers that we have today Wait a minute. Can and you staff members. social marketing to me? Social networking? Yeah, go on. Who isn't a member of Facebook? Who hasn't Twittered at least once? You know, for some of us who, you know, have been used to the traditional meeting media, we look at, you know, twit being the root word of Twitter, but definitely it is somewhere to go and it's somewhere to look at. That type of message is going out there through strategic people that we have planted to get it going because we haven't started our Facebook page yet. Yeah. We're going to have that going. We will use traditional radio. We will be teasing in the newspaper beginning Mother's Day, which is about a week in advance just giving people the heads up to be on the lookout for mock Boxing Day in May, the hottest event of this year's gardening season. So you're going to use a whole different mix of media to get that message across. You're not going to put all your eggs in one medium. Absolutely channel. not. I, I, never, I don't believe that works. Yeah. I believe that medias are best when used together, and they're definitely more entertaining. So 
we're now getting into you know the middle of this year we've still got a recession going on can you give us three tips that anybody should be implementing today to improve their marketing what are the three things you would do first and foremost courage don't be afraid to continue to market the reality is the market will bounce back the reality is people will garden uh -huh. the reality is if you stop advertising and your customer or your competition keeps going yeah that's likely where that customer is going to go for their needs and their products. Okay. The other reality is home is becoming more important. It's the little piece of turf that I own. It's my castle. It's my fortress of solitude. I want it to look nice. Now, what we're looking at is, is a different customer here in Canada now. Is we're starting to look at that garden decorator, as you've called it in the past. Yeah. And that garden decorator is extending themselves into their yard. Uh, I liken it to painting a room. Now, my wife loves to redecorate but she doesn't like to paint. And I certainly don't like to paint, but painting's a necessary evil yeah. to get to the end point of redecorating. That's what a lot of people are starting to do in their gardens, and it's basically about inspiring them and, and, and giving them the tools and the inspiration that they need to see it in themselves, that that's something they can do. That you can come in and you can totally do a makeover in your backyard. A whole lot less than you can take that vacation. Uh -huh. You know, and, and the airlines and travel industry are seeing that firsthand. Mm -hmm. The opportunities for us, I believe, are significant and they're huge throughout a recession. It's, it's about courage. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the first thing I'd say. It takes a lot of courage and determination to keep going. Okay. And number three? Number three. I don't know that I have a third. Uh, traditionally, I would say it's the same as, as in a good economy, yeah. and that is to make sure you don't have all your eggs in one basket like we talked about earlier. Yeah. There's different medias for a reason. Just as I don't believe there's any person at home that only reads a newspaper and never listens to the radio or only listens to the radio and never goes online, or only watches television and never picks up the newspaper. Yeah. The reality is you've got to reach those people everywhere. You've got to show them that they're in tune with their lifestyle and what they do. Now, you're planning to come to Australia later in the year. Yeah, I'm planning to get away from the turning leaves yeah. and the whole Halloween event and probably come over around mid-October. Okay. No Halloween, by the way. We're not too much into the Halloween. That's okay, because I don't need a whole bunch of little people dressed up for me. <laughs> now, use this word, retailtainment. Retailtainment. Okay, and that's what the theme is about. That's what How it's all about. How do we create that in the marketplace? How do you create theatre? Um, and, I mean, theatre happens everywhere, and you find it in the strangest places. Like, you, you found it at the front desk of the hotel here when yeah. you checked in the other day. Yeah. You know, people can make your experience or they can break your experience. Uh -huh. And your attitude towards understanding that in today's environment to be competitive, you need to entertain, that's going to be your meaningful differentiation. There's a whole lot of different people out there, but how many people are different in a way that means something? Okay, so you're okay. You ready for the kangaroo meat and the Shiraz? I'm looking forward to the Shiraz, and I will, uh, I will definitely try the kangaroo meat. Okay. So we look forward to seeing you later in the year down under. Look forward to seeing you. Do I need to bring maple syrup or anything oh, uniquely so, Canadian? Bring some maple. Ice syrup. wine, perhaps. Sounds great. All right. Look forward to seeing you then. Look forward to seeing you, John. Okay. Thanks a lot.